I have been practicing meditation now for over 50 years, yet it was only last week that I first tried a portable electroencephalogram EEG machine to study my brainwave patterns while doing sharped yoga, an ancient technique that focuses on listening to subtle sounds while sitting still. After teaching my Monday class in the sociology of religion, my colleague, Dr. Joshua Knapp from the psychology department, came to my office and said he wanted me to try Muse, the popular brain-sensing headband. It is very simple to use and connects seamlessly with one's smartphone and purportedly records your brain waves in three distinct modes, active, neutral, and calm. After a five-minute session, for instance, which begins with a brief calibration and short introduction, it will produce a brain activity chart replete with how many minutes were spent calmly, neutrally, or actively. The fun part about the device is that it entices you to become as still as possible, since then a tiny bird sound emerges. Racking up more bird sounds is indicative of how deep you have gone into your meditation. Although it is a fairly rudimentary device, EEG machines have been used for a long time to study the brain waves of meditators. Ken Wilbur has even uploaded a YouTube video of himself sitting in bed using such a gadget. Yet, I see great potential in these accessories since they allow for real-time analytics and can serve as progressive markers with which meditators can better gauge more precisely what is transpiring during their meditation sittings. It is not a stretch to imagine that in the not-so-distant future, human gurus can either be replaced or greatly aided by meditation applications that are connected with artificially intelligent agents. Even with a simple device such as Muse, the feedback loop was instructive, and I tried out a few suggestive tests on the machine. Modern sharp yoga practice, most prominently used in Radha Somi and Sant Mat related groups, employs a threefold technique Simran, repetition of a name or names, mantra, Daihan, contemplation, the darkness or light or guru's image within, and Bhajan, listening to the inner sound. So, in a suggestive beta test, I wanted to see which of these three techniques would elicit the most bird chirps, which I am told can range from 1 to 59 within a five-minute period. My hunch, or should I say hypothesis, was that Bajan, if done successfully, would garner the most bird chirps, with Simran coming in a close second and Dayan coming in a distant third. Mystics in this tradition who are regarded as masters usually advise meditating between two and three hours daily, with the majority of the time spent doing Simran and Dayan, whereas 30 or so minutes should be done in Bhajan exclusively. For the purposes of my trial runs, I decided to follow Muse's instruction of doing a short five-minute session at first. In each test I conducted, I focused on one technique only. Of course, it goes without saying that my experiments are only suggestive hints and shouldn't be construed as scientific. To the contrary, they merely represent potential avenues for further investigation. I was a bit surprised, though, when after 15 trials, the best results I got were indeed while doing Bajan. Now, undoubtedly, there can be several reasons for this, including confirmation bias. But this got me to thinking that with portable and relatively cheap EEG machines becoming more widely available, it can allow for widespread testing of various meditational methods that are more far-ranging than Sharp Yoga's three-fold process. Hatha Yoga immediately comes to mind, especially with its emphasis on pranayama, breath restraint, mudras, hand gestures, and asanas, body postures. But meditational disciplines are not limited to yoga, since the world's religions have developed all sorts of concentrative practices, ranging from Sufi dancing to the Jesus prayer in Christian Orthodox churches. 
The more widespread these augmented technologies become, we will be able to develop vast databases, quantifying which techniques seem to work best and under what circumstances. I have been beta testing doing meditation in virtual reality with the recently released Oculus Go, a standalone VR device that is extraordinarily simple and easy to use. I have coupled Oculus Go with Muse, though a bit awkward at first, to see how they may work together and what kind of results they may portend. Back in the 1950s, John Lilly pioneered building deprivation tanks to see how the mind responds when lacking incoming stimuli. He augmented his water-immersed sessions with certain psychotropic drugs and the results were startling. He experientially realized that the mind, when deprived of sights and sounds and smells, would by itself virtually create a kaleidoscope of wondrous hallucinations. Although Lilly would later begin to believe that such visions were more than passing phantasms, his friend and fellow sojourner Richard Feynman, the noted Nobel Prize winning physicist, disagreed and became convinced of their illusory nature. Yogis in the past would often put themselves in isolated environments so as to better focus within during their deep meditations and begin to produce a sophisticated phenomenology of what they encountered. One wonders if AI-connected concentration devices will be able to accelerate the learning curve of would-be meditators who don't follow a guru and don't live in a remote cave or forest and don't ingest psychedelic drugs. My own preliminary trials and errors in this arena suggest that devices such as Muse are indeed helpful, even if limited in their present incarnation. Perhaps in a decade or more, we will have a plethora of digital gurus designed to help us turn within and who will be personally aligned with our own self-interests and help us better progress to our desired goals. The future of meditation can be based more on a scientific understanding and less on an outdated mythological one. The Tibetan cave of tomorrow can be constructed instantaneously with a VR and or AR, and each of us can have our own spiritual teachers guiding us, even if they are wearing purely technological garb.